Before we do anything else, I would like to have a look around the Easy Drummer user interface so that we can get used to where things are and prior to us installing any add-on packs. So here is our now familiar graphic, and it's a dynamic graphic, remember, a graphic of the particular kit that we've got loaded up. And I call it a dynamic graphic because, as we've seen already, whenever we click on any of these drums, we see a slight shadowed area where we actually click to indicate that that's where we have struck that particular drum. And that's important because where you do strike a drum will produce one of the multi-layered sounds for that particular drum. So dependent on where you hit it, you will get that slightly dynamic change of tone and velocity. It's only subtle, but it's enough to replicate the sound of a real drummer hitting a real drum kit. Now at the moment we're looking at this drum kit, but do you remember from the previous tutorial? If I click on here, then I can change the sound of this default kit into any of these. Well, you can see the default kit is followed by the tight kit or the ambient kit and a basic kit. They're only subtle variations, but they are enough to create a slightly different sound. And these variations work by the mixer settings. We'll get back to this as we progress. Now, if you notice at the moment, we're on this default kit. And if I come down and click on the snare, well, of course, that's what it sounds like. But if I come back up here, click and roll down to tight kit and then come down and click on the snare once more. Well, this is what it sounds like now. It's not a huge difference, but there is a slight difference there. Of course, you can change it to any of these. The ambient kit, for example. Some of these kits, by the way, do take a little while to load up into your RAM. And you'll remember the indicator down here that visually informs us how many megabytes this takes up. With this ambient kit, for example, this takes up, well, you can see there, just over 262 megabytes. And if I click on the snare, as I will do in a second, you'll notice, because it's called an ambient kit, there is much more ambient sound of the room that this was recorded in. There is much more of this ambient sound that gets blended in with the actual kit itself. I'll hit the snare a couple of times now. OK, so I'm sure you could hear there a more reverberant sound. The kit hasn't changed. All that has changed is the microphones that were used as overheads and the stereo microphones that were used to record the room, i.e. the ambient sound, have been increased in terms of volume. Right, I'll go back up here and select my default kit once more. And if I hit my snare again, well, as you could hear, we don't get quite as much reverberant sound coming through. OK, so that's how we change or modify the sound of a particular kit that we've got loaded up. Bearing in mind that this is our pop stroke rock kit, and we know that from the visual indication over here, if I want to alter this to a different kit, then I would click on here and choose from any of the expansion pack kits that I've got loaded up at the moment. Now, I'm going to leave it at this kit, pop stroke rock, whilst we go through the rest of the interface. And I'm doing this because I want to show you that we can change any of these kits so that they sound slightly different to how they are initially loaded up. If I come back down to the snare and click, well, that's what the snare sounds like, as we've heard already. But if I want to change this, well, see this area here. If you click on it, then you'll see these different options. In this case, we're looking at the snare. If I want to change this snare from what it is at the moment, and you can see what's loaded as our snare at the moment, is a 14-inch Rogers snare. But notice down here the different snares that we can use to replace it with. Now I say the different snares, we can also use the same snare, but rather than it being a lively sounding snare, we get offered the choice of choosing a damped version of it. For example, with this Rogers snare, if I come down to the option below, to the 14-inch Rogers damped version of this snare, then just wait a few seconds whilst it loads up. Well, by clicking on our snare now, we get a slightly subtle change in sound. In this case, we've got a more damped version of this snare. We might not be able to tell so much when we've got the overheads and the ambient sounds bleeding in or mixing in or blending in to the kit. If we took all that away, then you'd be able to tell this better. We'll get back to that as we progress. Let's try a different snare. I'll click here once more, and I'll run down here to this smaller snare, this 13-inch GMS piccolo snare. And with it being a piccolo snare, we should be able to hear a more ringing sound when we hit it. So I'll do that now. In fact, I'll do it a couple of times. Here we go. 
Okay, now if you are listening to this through headphones, you'll certainly be able to hear the aftertone ringing for this snare. Whereas if I now click here again and run down to the damped version of it, remember it's the same snare, but this is a damped version, and just wait for it to load up, and click on the snare now, and again, well, you should have noticed the difference there. There wasn't that overtone ringing. I'm going to go back to where we started, so I'll click here once more and change it to our 14 inch Rogers snare. And once it's loaded up, I can click again. Okay, sounds good enough. Now, just to get back to what I mentioned a few moments ago about the extra microphones in terms of the ambient sound of the room being recorded, well, if I click on this button, this opens up our mixer, and you'll see seven separate tracks for the individual drums. And at the end, we've got two stereo microphone recordings, the first pair being a couple of microphones utilised as overheads above our drum kit, and right at the right-hand side there, indicated as room, well, a couple of microphones have been used to record the room that this drum kit was set up in. Let me just click on this cross to close so that I can show you a different way of opening up our mixer. What we just did was click on here where it says open mixer. But if you notice on our graphic just above that button, we see a graphic of a mixer. And if I click on it, well, it opens up our mixer. A nice little touch. OK, now you've just seen how I close the mixer by clicking on this cross. Alternatively, you could come down here and this button has now changed from open mixer to close mixer. OK, now before we do anything else, if you come up here, and you might not be able to see it so easily at this screen resolution, but there is a question mark here. If you click on it, then you can see that our two top options, tooltips and visual hits, are checked there, which means if I roll over something within the user interface, then I will see a tooltip. And, as I spoke about at the beginning of this tutorial, when we hit one of our drums, then we see a dynamic shadow, or, as it's called here, a visual hit, well, that indicates to make our experience of using Easy Drummer that much more fun. Notice all these other options as well. We'll get to these as necessary. And at the bottom, you'll see all the available expansion kits I've got installed on this PC at the moment. OK, so apart from the mixer, what else do we see down here? Well, you'll see another button labelled as Open Grooves. And once I click on it, then you'll see over the top of our graphic, here at the left in this column, a list of all the MIDI files stroke grooves that come with Easy Drummer as standard and with those expansion kits that we glanced at a few moments ago. Now, if you've not bought any expansion kits, you're not going to see all these extra categories. But as soon as you do install them, then you'll see in this area here, this will populate with all your MIDI grooves relating to the expansion packs that you buy. I'm going to finish up for this tutorial. I'll leave it here for now and I'll see you in a second.